Good afternoon. One moment, sir. The next matter on the court's calendar is appeal number 94, the matter of the Honorable Leticia D. Astacio. Counsel? Uh, may I reserve, Judge, two minutes for rebuttal? You may, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it is um, my honor to represent Judge Astacio, who is present here today. Uh, we argue that Judge Astacio should not be removed from the bench. She so is remorseful. Before we go any further, I just want to be very, very clear about what it is you are seeking. You are not disputing any of the findings of fact or the fact that the charges were sustained to the extent that they were sustained, but merely arguing for a reduction of sanction. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. So is it your position that uh, Ms. Estacio's limited judicial experience should somehow mitigate her conduct on the bench? As to certain of the charges, yes. Which charges, sir? Well, uh, to make a distinction between the um, on the bench charges, uh, if you will, to lump it into that category and the violation of the conditional discharge. I, I'm not going to argue uh, that the conditional discharge violations were anything but poor judgment on her part. There were two violations, which I thought she explained eloquently at the hearing. The first, she did not read carefully the conditional discharge component that required her not to drink alcohol. It's, it's like doing an autopsy. Does she have to read it carefully? Or, I mean, it's, first of all, it seems to me that anybody, and particularly a judge, uh, would want to read those conditions very carefully. Um, in, in this particular case, the judge actually, as I understand it, presided over DWI cases, so she even had more reason to be familiar with those types of conditions. So that seems like a little <clears throat> bit of a shaky. Well, uh, Judge Stein, l l let me say this. This is a form that was used by some judges and not other judges. And I'm not here to tell this court that Judge Astacio was not familiar with the form per se. What I am saying to you is that I believe, and, and, and I think the medical records demonstrate, this was a traumatic event for her, reading in detail what happened to her. She should have done it. She acknowledges she should have done it. She apologized to the commission nine times in her 10 minutes. Can I ask, was the requirement not to consume alcohol or not to consume alcohol and also not to drive while under the influence of alcohol? What, yes. uh, just to be clear, what, what were the conditions? Oh, yeah, thank you. The condition was not to consume alcohol. Then it, it made no mention of driving while under the influence? Uh, it's a conditional discharge, and so I think implied is that one should not drive also under the influence. Correct. Perfect. So then when she got behind the wheel and didn't pass the blow test? Uh, how, yes. How, how, oh, I'm sorry. Didn't no, no, no. Doesn't that already show that regardless of whether or not she had read the document, that she was not complying? Right. So, so I would refer the court to page 369 of the record. As to that issue, she was present with her aunt. The, um, the requirement, as I understand it, is she is to blow, and then uh, the other person is to drive if she um, passes the blow. What you do when you don't pass the blow, I'm not exactly sure. In, in this instance, she failed. So I, I would respectfully argue, Judge, that her intent was not to drive. Uh, uh, what are the other mitigating factors in uh, addition to the, as the Chief Judge already mentioned, the, the lack of experience, judicial experience? What other mitigating factors? Well, I, I think one of the um, important mitigating factors here is that this judge, um, she, she violated a conditional discharge that um, and took a trip. She had arranged to be contacted by her attorney by email. 
Uh, for whatever reason, he left the message for her by uh, cell phone, and so she was not aware uh, in real time that um, Judge Aronson on May 15th had required her to be present and uh, take a uh, test to ascertain whether or not she had been consuming alcohol. By so, that time, so, did she know that she was under a continuing requirement to take tests as directed? Well, the, the conditional discharge, uh, and I say this respectfully to that court, I'm not here to point the finger at them, but it, it's not exactly clear that she can't travel or can't be away in the con conditional discharge. Right, so it's not like a, a very often on probation or parole, there's a condition that says you can't leave the state uh, or sometimes even the county uh, without permission. Uh, I get that. I, I want to go and focus uh, on the difference between a, a removal and a censure. and. Uh, in, in the cases where we have uh, approved a removal, uh, it, it's because uh, there's a belief that the judge has been, has lost the public confidence irretrievably. So what evidence in this record would lead us to conclude that that is not the case? Um, I, I think there are several components of evidence. First of all, you have her biography in the record. As she was elected by, by, as the first woman of her ethnicity to the bench in that community. Uh, second, you have th the very clear demonstration by the judge that she is um, remorseful and and, 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 and I have to say this, when she was trying to express to the commission her remorse, she was interrupted and she was, and, and introduced into the proceeding was a, a statement uh, that the chair of the commission apparently had read or seen or thought he had read or seen. Is there any evidence as to that, uh, that in fact that commissioner or indeed any of the commissioners took that into account in determining the sanction? Well, or, or I, as I understand it, it, it was expressly stated that they would not and did not. Judge, that, is, that would be a difficult thing to prove, but let me say the statement speaks for itself. The statement, if it is to be believed and uttered, reflects contempt on Judge Astacio's part for both well, the I body. Well, I was just calling into question her sincerity in, in something that she had said. Well, n no. And, and I'm not suggesting that it was appropriate, oh, by Thank the way. you. Well, may I just finish by saying to you and, 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 and to the other members of the court, that statement not only suggested that she had contempt for the body, but also contempt of the rule of law. That was central to our argument in front of the commission. What we were attempting to demonstrate, what we were attempting to say to the commission is we're a young judge, we're only 37, 38 years old, and we understand that we've made mistakes and there was sort of a cascading of mistakes, but we have not done uh, or engaged in conduct that the people who you have, this court has historically removed that conduct. Uh, we have well, not... We, but the court has recognized that driving under the influence is a serious, grave matter, correct? Correct. And so uh, it's not once, it's more than once, that, or at least more than once that she attempted to do so post the, the misdemeanor, right? Judge, I think that's a question of fact in the record. I refer you back to page 369, but there is no question Judge Estacio acknowledged that she um, recognizes that driving under the influence is indeed a serious offense. Let, let me ask this. Um, yes, Judge in, in the, uh, Mr. Julian, in the cases where um, judges have been pulled over, gotten DWIs, but haven't been removed, they've, they've acknowledged that they're alcoholics and they've gone to AA, and usually there's been that kind of proof in the record. Um, do we have that kind of proof in the record here with, with Judge Edestasio? Uh, what we have in the record, uh, and there, there are exceptions, 
uh, Judge Fay. It's fine. Uh, I, I bow to your superior knowledge in that. Trust me. Okay. No, but 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 I, I just want to know. Uh, uh, in this case, in this case, we put into the record the um, analysis of her uh, psychologist, who pointed out that she was engaging in um, so, anesthetizing. So, uh, I by saw alcohol. that. So, so let's assume that's true. But she didn't say she was an alcoholic. I think, and I thought the psychologist said something like. Uh, some mild uh, uh, cognitive disability related, and, and that alcohol was used under t moments of stress. You, you, you have it pretty much, but the, the, she also went through two outpatient alcohol programs, one finding her to have a mild alcohol abuse disorder. Okay. Has there been a public acknowledgement that, that I'm an alcoholic, I was wrong, I shouldn't have done this? Yes. Uh, I mean, throughout the, an alcoholic, I cannot say that. No. Okay. But, but what I can say is a public acknowledgement uh, and nine times to the commission mm -hmm. in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, counsel. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, Chief Judge C. Fiore. Good afternoon, Your Honors. May it please the court. On October 3rd, 2016, just six weeks after the petitioner was convicted of driving while intoxicated, she attempted to commit the same crime again. She admitted in her testimony that she had four glasses of wine, three shots of tequila. She was drunk. She shouldn't have been driving. And yet she admits that she got in her car and she attempted to start and to operate the vehicle. Only her court-ordered ignition interlock device stopped her from doing so again. There are a lot of aggravating factors in this case. There really are a lot of them, most notably that she was incarcerated for violating a court order. But I think is this that, incident... Does that go to the public confidence? Is, is that your point on that? You said in Quinn the notorious involvement with the law was a factor, and I think you have that here in, uh, in droves. So, so, so a, uh, a judge who has a DWI and happens to make the news is more subject to removal than a judge who does the same thing, the but judge has no control over what the news day. does, Your Honor. I understand mm -hmm. uh, where you're going with that. No, a judge is responsible for her conduct. When a judge commits crimes that are newsworthy, it has an impact on public confidence. You have never had a judge who was incarcerated for violating a court order and went back on the bench, and it would be unprecedented to do that here. Absent the, the DWI, are the other charges on their face enough for the removal? The other, well, I think that the, the DWI with the multiple aggravating factors um, and the two violations of the conditional discharge, we consider those as a package. If you're asking about charge five and charge, I'm sorry, charge four and charge five, which are the on the bench contract, mm -hmm. we concede in the brief that those are less egregious. But I think they show a certain amount of lack of impulse control that you see through these other charges. Uh, you know, the comments about the, the buyer's remorse were, were really uncalled for. And she's not accepting responsibility for that. She's Counsel, trying to say how can we be assured that uh, the chair's comments didn't prejudice the commission's determination? Of read the determination. The determination at every turn points to record evidence in support of the findings of fact and the conclusions of law that they made. And really, how could it not? I mean, the, the DWI and the Thailand violation were established um, after trial and upheld on appeal. She admits to the first violation. She admits that she was rude and profane with the police officer. She admits nearly everything that you would need to find removal regardless of what she said. In terms of her remorse or accepting responsibility, you have her own brief to this court. She says she accepts responsibility, except she didn't really do it. She accepts responsibility for having been convicted of DWI, but she wasn't drunk and she was wrongly convicted. She's sorry that she spoke profanely to state troopers who were just doing their job, but they provoked it. And now you have an argument in her reply brief, which I was really quite surprised to see, and counsel mentioned it, an argument that she didn't really intend to drive on October 3rd, that her aunt was going to drive. What's surprising about that is surprising on several levels. First of all, it's an argument that appears for the first time in the reply brief. It's not in her main brief to this court. You won't find it in the briefs to the commission or to the referee. You won't find it in her statement that she made when she appeared before the commission. And it's completely at odds 
with her, plea, her guilty plea. She stood in open court and it said page 870 of your record, and she admitted that she attempted to start and to operate, to operate the vehicle. And then she goes on, there's pages of her explanation for how that happened, and it's all about how she didn't read the conditions. She says nothing about the fact that she didn't intend to drive. The fact that she's raising that defense now in a reply brief for the first time is evidence that she's still not willing to accept responsibility. Did she seek mitigation on the basis of some alcohol abuse problem or difficulty or challenge? <clears throat> well, there's no medical evidence here to support alcoholism. But let me say, the disease of alcoholism is not a defense. It's an explanation. Mm -hmm. If you have a case like Landesino, in which there's substantial medical evidence that a judge suffers from a disease, and there's also substantial evidence in the form of multiple people who come in and testify about the judge's efforts to rehabilitate himself and to conquer his disease. The commission in that case said, we would remove this judge but for the extensive evidence of rehabilitation. But if you go back to Quinn and to Aldrich, in Aldrich, there's evidence in that record that the judge had been sober for two years by the time it got to this court. He was an alcoholic and nobody disputed that. But the nature of his conduct, which was being intoxicated on the bench and making racist statements. So, so let me ask you this. Everything that happened, the, the three violations ultimately of the conditional discharge, um, if afterwards uh, the judge had uh, um, uh, gone to Alcoholics Anonymous, gone to a program uh, uh, for scoring all alcohol, uh, came out publicly and said, as an alcoholic, I made some mistakes, but I still want to be a judge and I think I can still serve the community effectively. In point of fact, maybe I even learned something from these experiences and I can be a better judge as a result of them. Because some of the remarks struck me more as immature than, than, uh, uh, than venal. I guess that, that would be the way I'd characterize them. Um, uh, as I think one of your commissioners said, she had been, may have been her own worst enemy. In that circumstance, would you, do you think the recommendation might have been different? I think, and that's exactly where I was going with, uh, with Aldrich, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. In Aldrich, there was evidence that the judge had gone to AA, that he was sober, that he was no longer an alcoholic. And that was, but you said the, the nature of the misconduct there was, I believe you called it, of such an aggravated nature that it simply wasn't enough. You said in other cases in Bauer, sometimes no amount of contrition is enough. And in a case where a judge has gone to jail for violating a court order, who's twice tried to drive while intoxicated, I think this might be a case where even if there had been sincere contrition, it would not have been enough. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Gillian? Uh, yes, thank you, Judge. First of all, um, this judge Counsel, could you, could you address uh, the commission's the Counsel for the Commission's point that despite uh, the representations that she's remorseful, the reality is that she blames others or says others provoked her or says, no, I never did that. Uh, and that she doesn't really recognize uh, that she has violated rules or that, that she's done something uh, she that, fully rec that warrants I'm removal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to you speak know, please. She fully recognizes that she violates rules. She, she had a trial in city court. She was convicted. She, she did not believe at the time she was driving at 7 o'clock in the morning and she was driving to the YWCA to work out. She did not believe she was under the influence of alcohol, but she accepts the verdict. She understands that that's the verdict. And this court has, has held, has said, that simply because a judge contests the issue, that in and of itself is not an expression of remorse. You don't check your rights at the door as a judge. She then went to three different programs, two of them outpatient, one required by uh, the conditional discharge to address her alcohol issues. Uh, and then she has said, at, at, and again, I want to reiterate to the commission nine times during the argument that was punctuated by the reference that I've referred to that she was sorry, that she accepted responsibility. In fact, her words in front of the commission were, I accept responsibility for everything. During the hearing as to each of the charges that are relevant, including the charge uh, dealing with her treatment of the police officer, she said she was sorry, she apologized at the station. 
she apologized to the police officer after she had engaged yeah, in I understand, but, but I think I, I thought counsel's point was that she may be saying those things, but, but then she also says, but I was provoked, and that helps to explain. I, I take responsibility. I shouldn't have done that, but I was provoked. Well, right? <laughs> or, or as you were saying, she blows, but it's really someone, uh, she blows uh, uh, to be able to, to get her BAC uh, number up. But, but it's her aunt who was going to drive. Well, and it, I, I wasn't, I, as you said now, I didn't think I was drunk, but I accept that that's the conclusion. And that's what he's saying, that that's different from true, uh, someone who really shows contriteness, who really says, I recognize that I was wrong. There are always facts that underline contriteness. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we're being penalized for trying the case to point out what exactly the mitigating factors were. I mean, you don't get to a place without walking there. And she got to the place where she apologized, but we also, in trying the case, talked about our journey. And if that, if that is bad lawyering on my part, I plead guilty. Thank you, counsel. This is appeal number 95, matter of Lacey L.